Hi there, Serial Trader here. Uh, I want to go through a historic decline just to give some context for the current one that we're in. And right now we're looking at the Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, from 1929. And September of 1929 is when we peaked there. This is a weekly chart. And this is basically the benchmark for you know, the worst, worst case scenario as far as an actual market crash goes. Uh, and I'm certainly not suggesting that we're about to repeat the 1929 uh, crash as far as its magnitude, but let's just see how bad it has been in the past. And as far as I know, this is the uh, you know most bearish example you can find on the uh, major index. Uh, okay, so let's just do a little investigation here. Uh, okay. So from that all-time high at, the, at that time in 1929, September, this is the initial leg down. We went down 49%. Uh, so, so far we haven't gone down 49% in our current leg down in today's market, but we have gone down uh, well into the 30%. Um, okay, but what, what happened after that 49% um, decline? Well, it didn't just keep going straight down, did it? Uh, because nothing ever goes straight in one direction. Uh, let's see here. I want uh, price range. So after that 49% decline, it rallied up uh, over the course of many weeks. It rallied 52.16%. So that was certainly a tradable low at the time. Uh, buying anywhere near the, the lows of that move, you had upside on the, just the index. I'm sure individual stocks certainly outperformed that in some cases of 52.16%. Okay, so this is the kind of, we'll call it the oversold bounce that I think we're approaching soon uh, on our current market today. Uh, now, I'm not saying we're gonna go down 49% before we actually get that bounce to start, but just as an example of probably the worst possible scenario, uh, even after going down almost 50%, you still get that huge balance, right? Now, to keep it within context, uh, after you got that 50% uh, uh, plus bounce there, you ended up going down a whole lot more. And from that, that recovery uh, rally high down to the ultimate low, let me just make sure I grab that right on the money. You went down another 86.35%, so absolutely devastating. And if we measure uh, from that uh, absolute high, the, the September 29 high, all the way to that bottom, you went down 89.49%, so just about a 90% peak to trough total decline. Uh, but then that was it. After that, you rallied up. Uh, so from the low in 1932, July of 1932, and I'm sure nobody at that point was very interested in trying to invest in the stock market, but that's precisely the right time uh, to be doing it on a longer term basis. Now, I'm sure lots of people just didn't have any money to do it, but for those that did and pulled the trigger, uh, from that 19, let's see, July... July 1932 low to the next high you made in March of 1937, you had a 382.22% rally. So that's an exceptional bull market. Uh, okay. And then again, so now we're gonna move on to another fairly historic uh, market decline. So after you made that peak, in 1937, and now obviously we're approaching the World War II era at this point. So that certainly wasn't a uh, positive time for anybody, uh, including market participants. But despite that, let's see how bad the, let's call it the World War II bear market uh, was. And so from that, that high, that high in March uh, of 1937, to the low of February or uh, 
Let's see here. Sorry, March 1938. That total move was a negative 50.17%. Okay, so again, seems like in the, these initial legs down, you just don't really go beyond that 50%. So that's kind of a, an area to look for. If we do keep going down uh, without a relief rally, that should probably uh, be the limit of how far we go down in this initial leg down in today's market. Again, I don't even think we're going there, at least not in the first leg down, but just to give some historical context for how bad has it been in history. And 50% down in the first leg down is essentially about as bad as it gets. Okay, and then you can see, so in the 1929 crash, after that initial leg down and that big relief rally, bear market rally, you had a much more, uh, significant decline into the lows but off this 1937 high after you had your initial 50 percent leg down you did actually and uh, i just want to show not that it matters too much but you did a nice um what looks like an elliott wave triangle so an a b c d and e okay AC trend line, BD trend line. And you can see these, these patterns still existed way back in the day, just like they do now. And why does that happen still? Because human behavior, uh, you know, kind of has a similar look on the charts as it always has. That's why these patterns are still valid. But, uh, okay, anyway, after you had that uh, initial recovery into that A wave, and that was the extent of the uh, the bear market rally, if you will, as far as percentage gains. Um, and just off that 38 bottom into that uh, 19, or it's still 1938, but November 1938 high, you rallied 63% off the bottom. Okay, so even during you know the World War II era, you still had uh, waves up and down. It wasn't just straight down. And you can't tell me that right now we're in a worse situation than World War II. Uh, I scoff at that notion. Now, anyway, after that, you went down again, obviously, eventually breaking out of this triangle to make our final low. And uh, again, we'll measure that down to that low from that recovery high. That was a negative 41% off that high. But what I want to show is this is a little different than the 1929 uh, to 32 example because yeah, you went down 50% in the initial leg, had your recovery, did a triangle and went down to make a lower low, but you didn't make much downward progress on that uh, second move down. Um, in fact, you only went slightly lower than the, what the initial leg down achieved. So in this case, peak the trough. So from the 1937 high, to the 1942 low, you went down 52.61%. And that's only slightly more than what you initially lost on that first uh, move down, which was 50.17%. So this, this shows an example where that initial leg down was you know, most of the decline in percentage terms. Now it took a long time for it to actually uh, get going back up in a meaningful way, but almost all the damage was done in this initial leg down. Whereas, in 1929, as I showed here, there was still plenty of damage to come after that initial recovery rally. But again, you still had to have that huge bounce before you went down again. So that kind of gives us some context for today's market, okay? Um, so in today's market, let me just uh, blow this up here a bit. So we've gone down, let's put on the daily chart here. So now this is the S&P 500, but the Dow similar, I think the Dow has gone a little bit more percentage wise, but uh, still similar. I think it's within a few percentage points of being the same as the S&P. Uh, so, so far in the S&P 500, we've gone down 32.8% without having a proportional uh, counter trend or bear market rally. And that is coming and I think it's coming quite soon. But let's say, just to give ourselves the worst case scenario, and we do the 1929 first leg down, 
and we go, let's call it around down 50%, okay? Right around 50%. So let's say we go down to about 1700 on the S&P. And then let's say we do our big rally. Uh, price range, okay. We do our big rally from that point. And let's say we do our 50, what was it, a 50% or so rally. Uh, let me just grab the, uh, the Dow there just to check from 1929, that bear market rally that we had, uh, just so I can make it uh, equal. Okay, so that was a 52.16% rally. So if we uh, duplicate that here, 52, let's say 52% rally off that bottom, that would still bring us to a level higher, even if we do make that initial, you know, let's call it 50% decline, and then have that 52% rally. After that's all said and done, you'd, you'd still be higher than we currently are now, uh, even if we are gonna get that next leg down uh, and have a 90% or so decline, which I don't think we will. But let's just say that's what's happening. Let's just say we're cloning the 1929 uh, historic stock market action. Uh, even in that scenario, you're still gonna have higher prices than you currently do now, even if we're going a lot lower first. So that's why I'm trying to argue, uh, you know, don't be overly bearish at these extreme levels that we're currently at because the most likely scenario, uh, at least in the near term, is going to be a bear market rally, uh, which could morph into something more, but we'll, we'll initially view it in the lens of being a bear market rally. So that's really what I want to point out. Basically, the bottom line is even 1929 had a big bounce before it continued going meaningfully lower. Uh, and that's important context to keep in mind. Uh, okay, so now just shorter term here, looking at the hourly chart here on SPX. Uh, now I do still have this tentatively labeled as uh, five waves down for CR3 complete on the 18th of March. But given the proximity to the lows that we got here on uh, Friday, March 20th, uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all if we do make a lower low, although I don't expect a whole lot of follow through, given all the uh, bullish divergences that are persisting here. Uh, but if we do make a lower low, that'll just simply mean uh, we got to relabel it here a little bit short term. Uh, but the expectation, the expectation would still be uh, for some sort of meaningful counter trend rally soon. And again, we'll have to examine whether that looks like a kind of a three wave uh, fourth wave rally or if we get something more substantial and get above that 4-1 overlap level maybe we can start thinking uh, there's something more meaningful to the upside starting but again we just have to wait and see how that how that unfolds uh, so uh, either way whether we break uh, the 18th of March low or whether it holds we're in a similar situation here as far as uh, expect uh, the expectation of some sort of uh, significant uh, rally. And I don't just mean a one day bounce, I mean something you know, multi-day, possibly a multi-week counter trend advance. And then of course we'll assess that action uh, when it happens and when the pattern reveals itself. Okay, so that's really what I want to go through on these charts. Now on the Thinkorswim candlestick chart, uh, we did do a bearish engulfing candlestick on Friday, uh, although we haven't made a lower low yet. So that indicates we might have a little bit of a short-term stab down. Uh, almost ideally, if, if we open up on Monday, say we open lower on Monday, a little gap down uh, below the lows, um, and then we rally back strong and do some sort of bullish uh, reversal candlestick pattern, a piercing or a hammer, or uh, even a bullish engulfing if we really rally up and close hard. That'd be a great buy signal, I think, uh, in such a oversold, exhausted area. But we'll have to see how Monday shapes up and what happens next week. That's just uh, kind of speculating on what could happen on Monday. And what if we open higher on Monday uh, and the lows hold and we continue going up? That's also fairly constructive. So we'll just have to see what happens. We're still below the daily T line. So before we get any kind of real uh, sustained bounce up, we do have to regain that daily T-line. And again, that's the 
eight period exponential moving average here on the daily chart. And you can see that's largely contained this entire decline. We haven't even tested it since we were up here uh, previously on that initial bounce up. So that's some things to look for uh, on the weekly chart. Weekly chart, obviously no signs of reversal there. We're gonna see it way before, I mean, the way the markets are moving so quickly, so volatile, you're gonna see the reversal on the daily long before it shows up on the weekly. But uh, just pointing out that currently, nothing is standing out there on the weekly chart as far as uh, upward reversal. Okay, and Dow Jones Industrial Average, exactly the same picture, essentially. Uh, bullish or sorry, bearish engulfing candlestick on Friday. So far, no new lows, but uh, again, a little short term weakness into Monday would not be uh, unusual at all here given the signal. Weekly chart on the Dow, very much the same picture. No reversal there yet, no signs of it. And NASDAQ composite. So NASDAQ Composite, also a bearish engulfing candle. You see we just bounced off that uh, daily T line as resistance and failed at it. So we need to start seeing that not fail at the T line again to have a more sustained rally up. So same with the NASDAQ. Now maybe the NASDAQ given its proximity or uh, its distance from the lows, maybe the NASDAQ could open lower without actually making new lows, but the S&P and the Dow essentially if they gap down slightly and open lower, uh, I think they be good for making a marginal new low uh, from the low that was made on the 18th, but the NASDAQ might be able to hold them. And as I mentioned, uh, so I think uh, AMD, uh, that setup I pointed out, AMD is kind of a NASDAQ type stock, a tech stock. Uh, so you wanna be looking at the stronger names that have their, the best looking setups individually, and they'll probably participate in the most meaningful way on any kind of market strength. So definitely, uh, very interested in AMD going into next week. And uh, I think the, the NASDAQ kind of showing its relative strength to the other two indices uh, complements that, that notion. All right, so weekly on the NASDAQ, anything here? Not really. Um, again, it's gonna show up on that daily chart long before you see anything uh, constructive on this weekly chart. Okay. Now on the VIX, uh, hang on there. On the VIX, we are starting to break this uptrend. Uh, now at, at one point on, on Friday, we were breaking it very nicely, but you can see we uh, rejected those lower levels for now. So we have this long lower uh, shadow on this candle, but you can see this whole time, this, uh, uh, this T line essentially has contained the VIX uptrend as a support level, and now we're finally testing that. So there are some signs here that volatility is starting to crack, uh, which would indicate that the market is ready to have some sort of uh, relief rally at the minimum. Now, one little tool I wanna look at before I get to the VIX, VVIX tool. Here's another uh, creation of Robert Kelly here. So this is the VXX. It's a volatility ETN that a lot of people like to play. And this is a 70 period simple moving average, and this is a 30 minute chart. So you can see basically since VXX, this is all Robert Kelly's work, I'm just uh, repeating it for you. Since VXX basically got above this 70 period moving average, that contained as a support level essentially, this entire advance in VXX, and now we're finally breaking below that 70 period average. And see, we broke it there initially uh, on Friday, and then started coming up to test the underside of it. And if that fails and acts as resistance and we continue down, that'll be quite constructive for the market to rally. Because obviously uh, this is VXX, so it has a strong relationship with the VIX itself. So if you're tanking the volatility and the volatility products, that likely means you're rallying the market. So that inverse correlation, that's what we're kind of measuring here. So if VXX is starting to break its trend, uh, that's an early sign that uh, the markets are gonna start to break their downtrend. So that's something to use as a little uh, tool there along with everything else. Now the VIX VVIX tool, still no confirmed buy signal, but again, preconditions persist. 
So we have the divergence between VIX and VVIX when they made their uh, relative highs there. So that's step one. We are now kind of torturing this red moving average on VVIX. We've kind of just danced around above and below it here for a bit. So that's the second condition for the buy signal is get below the red moving average on VVIX. And then of course, final confirmation is getting uh, above the blue moving average on SPX. And you can see so far, that blue moving average has just been serving as resistance. But once that changes and we get above it, then we got our buy signal. Just not there yet though. So that's really all I have to say about the uh, overall markets heading into this coming week. I'm definitely looking for a, a big reversal and a significant, uh, at least bear market rally. And then we'll reassess uh, as, as things progress there. All right, Serial Trader signing off.